Welcome back to the Make a Good Mega Man Level 3 Mega Mix Engine tutorial series. This is part 2, which is going to be focusing on a couple more of the basics that are a little more complicated and have become frequently asked questions, but they're not too bad. Uh, this will essentially just be music, uh, creation code, and animated tiles. Uh, first up, let's talk about music. To set up music, the first thing you want to do is you're going to want to go to the settings tab and hit the creation code button. This will bring up a big old code, code window. I'll do a code tutorial later along down the line, but all you need to do for now is just uh, type in play music, which is just a name of a script. You'll see the arguments for the script appear down on the bottom. Uh, for this engine, you can use either OGS uh, via the FMOD extension, or uh, any like raw uh, video game music file like NSF or SPC or VGM uh, via the GME uh, extension. Uh, first up is OGS. Let's just pretend this will be the file name. And I have an, uh, an OG of Heatman's theme. Uh, obviously put the type as OG. Since this isn't a NSF, you can just put zero for the track number. Loot points. This is what stumps a lot of people. So I just have this open in Audacity right now. Uh, don't actually have an OG of Heatman's theme because a Mega Man 2 NSF is included within the engine, but this is just an example. So a lot of people be seem to be confused on how to find loot points. You can see that there's a general pattern to these waves. So <clears throat> you can just listen for when it sounds like the music loops. So I will just find them actually really quick and get back to you. So through looking at the file, I've determined that the song loop starts starts at approximately 25.57. Five, eight. This is in seconds. So just go here. 27.575. And the end is right where I cut off the file, which is 51.16. You may notice that it says song length in seconds and not song loop point end. Uh, unlike this one, which is basically just saying song, song loop point start. That's because looping lo works a little weird in this engine, and also because this is a way that generally decreases file size of the final game and such. Cut off your sound file right when the loop point ends. Cut it off, like, right here. This is when the song loops, uh, according to my deductions. After this, just export and do your thing with that. Uh, I don't really want to export this, because I'm not actually going to use this. But that's essentially how you get loot points. Um, and of course, true for loops. And for volume, the max, you, usually you shouldn't have to go over one. If it's still too quiet, just up the decibel level in here. Uh, usually magic values that work for general sound balance is either 1 or 0 0.8. Um, as for VGMs, uh, for example, uh, let's use like Toxic Seahorse, I can't spell, SPC, don't put SPC, just put VGM. Uh, SPCs don't have track numbers, NSFs do. Uh, if you're using one of the included NSFs, there's a track list in, I believe, the root folder. It's on the git somewhere. Otherwise, just get an NSF opener, like Audio Overload or something, that's the one that I use. And Audio Overload actually has the track number at one higher than it actually is, so you have to subtract one. Um, but either way, just find the track number somehow. You don't need loot points. Uh, and VGMs loot by default, which is why I like using them, because you don't have to find loot points. Because they're embedded into the file, and you can use volume as well. So, if you tested this, you probably noticed that there is no music playing right now. That's because you actually have to insert it manually via the included files tab. These are basically all the files that are included with the engine by default. 
Uh, so you want to go to music. This folder probably won't look exactly the same in your copy because it's going to be cleaned up. But what you want to do is just right click and hit insert included file. And then search for your file in the folder. I'm not going to do that on camera because I don't want to see, to show people my file paths. And just click on it and it'll just insert automatically. Then the music will work. Once you load your level, you will see that the level music is indeed Toxic Seahorse. Now let's cover some creation code. Creation code is essentially what allows you to customize, like, anything. So, let's grab something simple. Let's use count bombs. And let's expand this section a little bit. So by default, the count bombs have three on their timer, which is something you can check by hitting edit object. And you can just look into the source and see the defaults. This ne code needs to be commented. Um, but of course, time is what we want to edit. So let's say we want to make this time bomb super short. And we want to right click, go to creation code, and then type in time equals one. Essentially what this is going to do is it's just going to set the variable time equal to one on the room start. Uh, most objects will reset stuff like this on their respawn, but uh, some, some, it's not foolproof for everything because like if you try to set like s the X speed of this hothead or something, it's not going to work because X speed is reset upon despawn, uh, but stuff like the customization variables here work. Let's make time equals zero, because you can put time on the timer there. And there you go. This is some very basic creation code. Uh, a lot more objects have way more uh, in general. There's some pretty universal uh, creation code variables. Uh, for example, health. you can set the health of an enemy. Uh, by typing in health point start equals whatever, so I can make this hot head only have one health. You can make uh, anything automatically face a player or not by typing in face player equals true or false, and you can also use face player on spawn equals true for if you only want them to face the player on spawn. Uh, but here you'll make it so the hot head will always or hot dog always be facing the player. So to showcase this we can delete some the tiles. And now I'm gonna put a ladder right here. And there's a couple others. You can check by going to the documentation wiki. There might be some info in some other places later and I might go into it into more detail via an advanced the advanced features video. But for now, this is all you really need to know. If you're ever unsure about anything, and you just want to select a gimmick and see what's possible, then all you need to do is just, like, like I don't know, you want to see tile scroll as customization. Just hit edit object, and you'll see everything here. There, most objects will have this, uh, this creation code label at the top of the file. Some might be missing, um, if so, there's a good chance they might be fixed because all of them should have documentation like that. Um, but yeah, so let's show this off by testing it. So as you can see here, Hothead has one health. And the hot dog will face me. And now we can experience count bombs. The magic of creation code. And the last thing for this video, let's talk about animated tiles. This seems to be a thing that's been confusing a whole lot of people. So let's just grab a random uh, tile set from the So let's take Bright Man's tile set. Uh, in the original tile set, these little thingies shock back and forth. 
So, I mean, obviously they're not gonna do that right now, because we haven't set it up that way. So, how about we actually set it up that way? So, what you want to do, the most simple method is to go to Level Objects, Aesthetic, and use Tile Animation. There's a couple other eh, Tile Animation objects that you can use, uh, which might be covered in a different video, but Tile Animation is the most user-friendly, uh, simplest one. So, let's just place down a couple tiles really quick. Alright, here we go. And since this isn't auto-tiled, let's just do this really quick. You can auto-tile animated tile sets, it's just I'm being lazy right now. So, this object. Again, let's just hit edit object and get this info right here. So let's get started on the creation code. Anim length is essentially how many frames are in the animation. Since it's Brightman style set, there are two. And you can check this by going to the backgrounds folder over here, animated folder. There's only one Brightman. Uh, anim time is how many frames that it spends on every frame of the animation. So if I wanted it to shock back and forth every six frames, I would put six for that. Uh, this is how you just specify which ones, which tile sets to use in animating. It starts at zero. Uh, it starts at zero and increments, but still keep the anim length at two. Uh, anim animate on transition. If it's false, it'll stop the animations during the transition. Um, Otherwise, it will animate on transition. An animation layer is the tile layer that it needs to an animate on. And you can also look it up, Theraman Stage, for how to set this up. So, let's take a look. As a fair warning, I'm gonna slow this footage down because it's probably an epilepsy risk, so... So, that is a disaster. So how do we actually fix that? Animated tiles that are a different tile set than any of the others on the same layer What I'm saying is that they have to be on a separate layer. So let's just pick 700 for a new Brightman tile layer and get rid of these Since those are the only animated tiles we can just delete those Find layer 700 And just replace all of the animated tiles again. Make sure to update this to use the proper layer. And let's test. So far so good. And there we go. The tiles are animated. So that's usually all you need to know for animated tiles. There is an example for single tile set animation, I believe in Flashman stage in the example game. Uh, layer animation, I'll just talk about it really quick, uh, is essentially just tile animation, except instead of it automatically animating the tiles for you, you place tile sets on like separate layers and it alternates between which layer is shown. Um, I'm not going to show it off right now though, personally I like using regular tile animation more than layer animation because I find layer animation pretty tedious. Though layer animation is a little more flexible. Anyways, that's basically it for this video. Next time, probably going to be covering some more stuff. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing.